Clark Magnet High School is a national blue ribbon school, among the top 1% of schools in the nation. The state of California has also recognized Clark as a California Distinguished School and a Title I Achieving School. Clark Magnet is a science and technology magnet school with emphasis on science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. For 85% of the students at Clark, English is their second language. Over 60% of Clark students live below the poverty level. Story maps align perfectly with the Common Core state standards. Using story maps, we were able to know the location of where each biome was, and knowing that, we were able to understand how every biome was, its conditions, what goes on there. But when you use story maps, you know what type of plants and animals are in an area and how the conditions are weather-wise. From there, then you understand what kind of conditions an animal needs to meet in order to survive. If students did not do story maps, I don't think they would understand anything about ecology as much as they would now. If students are using story maps to investigate their disciplinary core ideas, then they're doing research, they're paraphrasing, they're citing their sources, and they're using multimedia presentations to communicate their, their ideas. The Lenovo's Wing Ambassador lessons we took, um, we learned how the marine debris actually affected the albatross and regular seabirds in their daily life. We took NOAA's satellite taggings from the birds and we mapped it in ArcGIS Online and we figured out their flight patterns and where they go to feed their chicks. It makes NOAA's data much more easier to classify with the symbology and we are able to tell the month, the date, the type of bird. Notice that most of its diet was basically plastic. It's just terrible that polluting the earth and we actually need to put a stop or else most of the albatross chicks are going to eventually die out from all this plastic they eat and we, we have to do something. We use the Embari Earth Institute lesson plans to give us the idea to track behavioral patterns of the seals and we got that data based on satellite tracking from WhaleNet. We use that data to map the movements of these seals in ArcGIS Online and from that we were able to tell what the seals are doing throughout the year. The actual map, we have location points and a travel path and the location points are categorized by the months and each of the months are color coded. We used ArcMap to create the GIS data and then we were able to import that into ArcGIS Online. We used a variety of tools. One of the tools that was the main chunk of our project was using ArcGIS Online. Their mapping software, specifically the story template, allowed us to map certain points using our ROV, which is the remote operated vehicle. It's kind of like a little submarine with a smart tether attached to it that maps out GPS coordinates of certain locations that we're in. It also has a camera built into it and it takes pictures of the marine debris spot sites. And we would use that alongside with story maps and we would plot points throughout the earth and we would show specifically where we found the marine debris at what time and the coordinates as well. Our goal and objective was to teach about marine debris and how it affects the world globally. We used um, RJS online to get the word out about illegal marijuana grow sites and the damage caused by the river sites for the of them as sites. For the story map, we took pictures of the trash and everything left out by the illegal marijuana growers and mapped it out to where they, the grow sites are at. I plan to expand the use of story maps in my biology class and I'm really looking forward to exploring feature services with my science research students. This way they could crowdsource their data collection and the stuff that they could do with ArcGIS Online would have been unimaginable just a few years ago. Thank you, ESRI!